Hello! In this playlist, I'm going to be drawing out the blood supply to the abdominal organs. I'll start with the arterial supply to the foregut, then move to the midgut and hindgut, before looking at the venous drainage and the portal system. If you want to draw along, you can find links to the illustrations below. The foregut is the first region of the gut tube, running from the mouth to halfway along the duodenum. Here we can see the major organs of the foregut. In reality, these are much closer together, but I've drawn an expanded view so we have room for our drawing. First, we have the abdominal portion of the esophagus. This passes through the diaphragm at the level of T10, and you can remember that, because if you spell esophagus the British way, it's ten letters long. At the end of the esophagus is the stomach, with its lesser and greater curvatures. Next, we have the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum, and this loops around the head of the pancreas. Now, technically, only the upper portion for the duodenum and pancreas are part of the foregut, so I'll shade out their lower halves. In life, the pancreas passes up behind the stomach, and its tail will finish here, at the hilum of the spleen. Finally, we have the largest internal organ, the liver, and the gallbladder hidden underneath. All of the blood supplied to the abdomen originate from the abdominal aorta, and this passes through the diaphragm at T12. The blood supply to the foregut starts with an unpaired artery that leaves the abdominal aorta just after it pops through the diaphragm. This is the celiac axis, or trunk. The celiac axis heads out and then splits into three branches, and I'll be drawing each of these in a different colour. First, we have the left gastric artery. As the name suggests, this will head towards the left side of the stomach, supplying this part as a lesser curvature. It also sends esophageal branches to the esophagus. And that's it. The first branch, done. Next, we have the splenic artery. This is a large, prominent artery that takes a tortuous route towards the hilum of the spleen. As it does so, it sends numerous small branches that supply the tail of the pancreas. It also sends branches to the stomach. Some of these are small branches that pass to the rounded fundus, and these short branches to the stomach are known as the short gastric vessels. We also have an artery that runs along the greater curvature of the stomach. This is the left gastroepiploic, or gastroemental artery. This means we have two major groups of vessels supplying the curvature of the stomach, the gastric vessels and the gastroepiploic vessels. Now there are a couple of ways you can remember which one is which. You could remember that since the greater omentum hangs from the greater curvature of the stomach, the vessel running between them will be gastro -amental. But personally, I prefer to remember that the lesser curvature is small, so I only have room to write the word gastric. But on the greater curvature, I have room for a long word like gastroepiploic. So, that's the end of our splenic branch. The third and final branch, the celiac axis, is the common hepatic artery. This branch heads right towards the liver before dividing into three smaller branches. The first of these is the right gastric artery, and hopefully you can work out from its name that this will be passing to the right-hand side of the lesser curvature. The second branch supplies the stomach and duodenum, so we call it the gastroduodenal artery. This heads down here and divides into two branches. One supplies the greater curvature of the stomach as the right gastroepiploic artery. And we can now see that the stomach receives an extensive blood supply from all three branches of the celiac axis. The other vessel supplies the upper portions of the pancreas and duodenum, and this is the superior pancreatico duodenal artery. The third and final branch is the hepatic artery proper, that supplies oxygenated blood to the liver. Inside the liver it divides into left and right hepatic branches, and it's this division of the blood supply that separates the functional lobes of the liver. We also need to draw the cystic artery that supplies the gallbladder, and this normally arises with a branch of the right hepatic artery, but can originate from the common hepatic, or even the left hepatic. And with that, we've drawn the blood supply to the foregut. Now if you've had a go at drawing it out, I'd recommend trying it again without the video, and seeing if you can remember the courses and names of these vessels. In the next video, I'll be drawing out the blood supply to the midgut and hindgut, but until then, thanks for watching, take care, 
and I'll hopefully see you soon. Cheers.